Nelson Mandela was a towering political figure, uh, an icon for the entire world, and his passing is lamented not just on the left, but also on the right. There's a kind of universal approval of Nelson Mandela now. It wasn't always like that. In the 1980s, he was denounced as a terrorist by politicians like British Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher and American President Ronald Reagan. He'd taken up the gun against apartheid South Africa in 1961. He'd been caught, put in prison, and had spent 27 years on the notorious Robben Island uh, prison before finally being released in 1990 and then becoming the first black elected president of South Africa in 1994. So what was it that Nelson Mandela devoted his life to fighting? It was a system of racial oppression which involved the majority of the South African population, three quarters of whom were native black Africans being denied access to the majority of South Africa, restricted to 13% of the land, which were turned into reserves or bantustans for them to occupy, and when they went into the so-called white areas, being required to do so carrying a pass, which would regularly be checked by the police, a pass which allowed them into the white areas only so that they could work as migrant labourers on short-term contracts. This was the ultimate form of precariousness the ultimate form of casualisation of labour to make it difficult for workers to organise. This system of racial oppression was intimately linked with the development of capitalism in South Africa, specifically with the development of the gold mining industry. Gold had been discovered in 1886 and South Africa rapidly became the world's leading gold producer. But South African gold is hard to extract and the mine owners needed a large workforce of unskilled workers. African peasants were shifted off the land and herded into the reserves, and then, in order to make a living, had to sell their labour power to the mine owners as migrant labourers. So South African capitalism, and specifically the South African mining industry, was intimately involved in the development of racial oppression in South Africa. In the post-war period, South African capitalism boomed with the growth of manufacturing industry in the 1950s and 1960s, sucking even more black workers into the workforce, even as the apartheid laws were made more severe by the election of a nationalist government in 1948. This meant the growth of the black working class and the possibility of mass resistance from below and South Africa was shaken by wave after wave of mass struggle through the 1950s, 60s, 70s and 80s. As the black working class grew larger and better organised and more militant, South Africa became increasingly ungovernable and sections of the white political establishment and large sections of the white business community decided that they had no alternative but to cut some kind of deal with the black resistance, to make some kind of move towards the political enfranchisement of the black majority. Nelson Mandela was a leading member of the ANC, the African National Congress. The ANC had been set up as a fairly moderate pressure group in 1912 but it had become increasingly militant and radical and determined. That's why the ANC had taken up the gun in 1961 and why Nelson Mandela himself had ended up spending 27 years of his life in a South African prison. But despite its radicalism and militancy, the ANC's approach to the liberation of South Africa was to see it in terms of two stages. First of all, the problem of racial oppression would be dealt with, and then at a later stage, the social deprivation of South African capitalism and the poverty and the unemployment of ordinary South Africans. This separation of the two meant there was the possibility of cutting a deal 
with the white establishment. Black majority rule would be granted, but the essentials of South African capitalism, still white dominated, of course, would remain. The result since 1994 has been the emergence of a black elite of businessmen, of politicians, of professionals, uh, of managers, of people able to make a good living for themselves in the new South Africa, but it's left the majority of black South Africans still living in poverty, still subject to exploitation in the workplaces, still often denied basic public services, still very often rotting uh, in areas with no real possibility uh, of making a living, of getting a decent job. The tensions between the ANC political elite, the ANC establishment, and the mass of ordinary black South Africans has increasingly taken the form of open class struggle. Just recently, strikes by black South African miners have resulted in confrontations between the police and striking workers, culminating in the massacre by the police of 34 striking black miners at Marikana in 2012. The biggest example of police violence against striking workers since the apartheid era. So Nelson Mandela is a symbol of the struggle against racism a figure like Abraham Lincoln or Martin Luther King in terms of his historical impact and resonance. But he's also a figure who can be fated now by the international elite because he cut a deal with South African capitalism and enabled it to survive. And what that in turn means is that the real legacy of Nelson Mandela is that we have to be inspired by the tradition of struggle that he represents, but to see his achievement as a staging post towards another revolution, a more complete revolution, which will bring down South African capitalism and for the first time make it possible for the great majority of ordinary black South Africans to live a decent life of equality and democracy, to realize the ultimate goal of the struggle against apartheid.